So today I wanted to do another educational ASMR video. It's been a while since my last one, and that's because my brain turned to mush. I wonder why. If you take a cruise, let's start in Orlando, but you miss it in Orlando, but it stops in Miami and you can make it but you gotta pay a fee and that's because that tax is because of the Jones Act. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that was something I recorded while I was uh, researching it. That was pretty catchy at the time. So, full disclosure, um, today I'm going to be talking about the Jones Act and um, the reason I say full disclosure is that I am quite biased. Um, I am against the Jones Act. So take what I say with a pinch of salt. I try not to put my own opinions in until um, I get to my conclusion. And I won't make this video long. Um, I don't want to get into the nitty gritty details because then it gets really boring. But um, I just want to give you guys an idea. A lot of people don't know what it is, um, but it's a huge problem I think in the United States. Um, or maybe it's not. If you don't agree with me, I would love to hear your points of view. So, what is the Jones Act? The Merchant Marine Act um, was brought into federal law 100 years ago in 1920. It is a protectionist act which states that in order for a ship to transport goods, people, cargoes, cows, whatever it may be, between two U.S. ports, so two ports within the United States domestic, domestically, the ship that uh, transports these goods has to be U.S. built, owned, and operated by U.S. citizens or residents. Now, one of the most important things I say here is that it is a protectionist measure. What is a protectionist measure? So protectionism is... Um, so <laughs> protectionist acts are ones that basically enforce domestic production um, in an industry and shield off foreign competition. So basically limiting your, your basically limits competition. One uh, very popular uh, form of uh, protectionism is tariffs. So putting uh, taxes on goods on foreign goods um, that come into the country in order to um, keep the industry running within that country domestically. I have mixed feelings about protectionist mother measures, but we'll get into that in a minute. Okay, so what? What's the big deal with this law? Well, it means that any foreign flagships, um, which are pretty much all cruise ships, except for one, there's, I found out today by mistake, there is one, it's like the Norwegian USA is the only cruise ship that is registered in the States. But um, all, pretty much all cruise ships, uh, like all cruise ships have a, um, pretty much all of them flag of convenience, which means that they're registered in a country which has low taxes and low wage laws and they're more relaxed, so it's cheaper for them. Um, so, uh, this means that when you do a cruise from one point of the United States to another, you are not allowed to embark or disembark passengers without paying that tax. Yeah, Boaz is really upset because she's always wanted to do a cruise within the States, but not start at the destination. <laughs> but to make it a little clearer, I'll give you an example. Um, that's like saying you can't fly an Airbus, a plane manufactured in Europe, domestically in the United States. Or like saying you can't use your BMW manufactured in Germany to go from Miami to New Jersey bringing your cat. <laughs> like that's kind of the equivalent of it. Um, and no, Airbus does fly its planes domestically within the United States. American Airlines do buy them. They, they are registered in the States, but they are still allowed to fly domestically in special cases, um, even if they're not flagged, even if they're not US registered. But anyways, that's beside the point. And this creates a very limited competition for ships um, and uh, cargo services within the States. So, 
Who cares about ships? Well, the Jones Axe ships are much more expensive to build and operate. This is because they do protect the... <laughs> It goes far beyond protecting boas. <laughs> it goes far beyond people missing their cruise ships. Um, I think that um, the, two, the two states which are heavily affected by the Jones Act are both Hawaii and Alaska, and territories such as Guam and Puerto Rico, which I'll be going into. So Jones Act ships are, again, as I said, more expensive to operate. The service, the crew, the members, they, uh, their wages cost more. Um, and I mean, that's the whole point of a protectionist measure is that it limits competition on an already pretty, on a sector that's already pretty hard to get into. So that is something that it does. Um, and I'm gonna give examples of how the Jones Act has uh, affected the United States and territories. On September of 2017, a Category 5 hurricane um, hit Puerto Rico. This was a devastating uh, natural disaster, and Puerto Rico, as a territory of the United States, needed a lot of um, emergency supplies and aid from the mainland United States. The Jones Act was discussed and put forward into decision yet again. The ships that would be qualified to bring cargo to Puerto Rico from the mainland would have to be these large ships that would carry as much as possible but there just weren't those type of ships with the Jones Act and it would just cost more and that's money that could be used to help the relief. However, um, this is also a very, um, <laughs> however, after two days of um, debate, uh, the uh, Jones Act was lifted temporarily in Puerto Rico because of the disaster and I will be talking about when else other times it's been lifted. So as a protectionist acts, the ships that are used have no global competition. As I mentioned before, you limit the competition from around the world, you limit the market. There is no free choice in this sort of market. It is essentially a monopoly, but with ships. It makes the costs of goods coming from within the United States to U.S. territory more expensive. And it's from a law from a hundred years ago that is affecting this. So goods coming from Puerto Rico, from Hawaii, end up being more expensive. It doesn't even allow for fair competition within other markets. Um, I say this, I'm going to talk about this with Hawaii. So for example, Hawaii um, relies on sending and receiving cargo from this mainland United States. The best way to do this is through ships. You can do it through plane and air travel, but um, it doesn't take as much, um, it doesn't have as much space as a cargo ship would. And theoretically, it should be more expensive. Unfortunately, the Jones Act does not make it more expensive, <laughs> does not make it more, a more expensive option most of the time. Um, this will drive up the price of goods within uh, island country. So within the island state of Hawaii, Alaska, uh, Puerto Rico, uh, Guam. It rises up the prices of all the items. And as a protectionist measure, um, that is a side effect, but this is kind of like having a tariff, but because of delivery, <laughs> you know, because of the manufacturing delivery. Now, well, let's say you're even a manufacturer in Hawaii and you want to ship your goods to the United States in large quantities. Your best bet's probably to fly it over, which isn't all which shouldn't be the best option for example um i was listening to a podcast on npr about the jones act which i will link below very interesting if you want to hear about it i think it's uh, really brings up a lot of points about the about this issue but um what i was saying oh yes yeah, so they mentioned there and i actually found the website um of this cattle uh, of the who they were talking to um he so they're talking to a farmer in hawaii um he grows beef he produces beef what's the word for that he like makes beef he raises them he raises the moo he raises the moo and
And since most of his demand is in the mainland of the United States, the Jones Act has made it really difficult for him to export his goods, well, yeah, export, it's not even, yeah, export his goods into his own country. So he used to do it where he would ship his goods to Canada and they would drive down to the United States. What he'd started doing was he started um, shipping cows when they were little, so they didn't weigh as much onto planes. And uh, I forgot her name, but uh, the one of the ladies of the um, <laughs> one of the ladies in the in the podcast, like one of the producer, uh, not producer, but the person who talks, one of the presenters. Uh, she said, uh, "If cows are flying, something is wrong." If cows are flying, something is wrong. It could be pigs. It'd be pigs are flying too, but unfortunately this example is with cows. So it creates unfair competition in that sector too. So unfair competition within your own territories. Um, and again, with cruise ships, you're not allowed to embark or disembark passengers within the United States. So say, I, I think my little song gave a good example, but say you're coming from or if, like your cruise is leaving from Orlando to then it stops in Miami for a day and then goes to the Bahamas. That was the example they gave in the podcast. If you miss that port in Orlando, it costs you extra to get on in Miami just because of the Jones Act. So I would like to note that the Jones Act has also been waived in certain country in certain natural disasters. So for Hurricane Maria, which was in Puerto Rico, um, as I said earlier, the Jones Act was waived, was lifted for a certain period of time. And I'm just looking down here to make sure. Um, it was also waived for Katrina, Harvey, Sandy, and Irma. Um, but the lifting of this act is temporary and is done so on a case-by-case -case basis. There is no law, at least not that I could find. If there is, please let me know. I did, there is no law that states that it ever needs to be waived during the cases of natural disaster. So there have been times where certain states have been in a crisis, maybe not as big as the ones I've just mentioned, but the Jones Act would have helped been helpful and, well, the waiving of the Jones Act would have been helpful, but it wasn't waived. So damn, that sounds pretty good. What are some of the good things and why was it made? So the Jones Act was um, passed after the First World War as a measure to protect both the United States marine workers. Um, the ideas of it were safety, uh, jobs, uh, during a time of uncertainty. The Jones Act would force um, the United States to produce more, um, more vessels, more ships, because there would be no other option. Um, and in doing so would have a bigger supply in case of another security threat or another war. And this was a Again, understandable, during these times, people were very scared, people were worried that something else could happen, and there was a lot of um, German, a lot of uh, vessels German made that were, Germans destroyed a lot of U.S. vessels at the time. And it also wanted to give people an opportunity to work in um, the maritime industry. Um, so yes, yeah, safeguards, the there is a certain bright side to the, um, there is a certain bright side to the Jones Act. That bright side, um, I guess you could say a bright side, but, um, is that it does give, um, a, there is a positive side to the Jones Act. It ensures a certain quality of life for those working in the maritime industry and make sure that they're not exploited, such as sailors, staff workers, engineers, maintenance, you name it. There's been a long history of people in this industry being exploited and paid very little and living in horrible conditions. However, that shit still happens. Our cruise ships using this flag of convenience means that they hire people with, for very little money and they it's practically, they're practically slave laborers at this point. It also just means that you decrease the competition of 
uh, foreigners taking their jobs. That is pretty much something that really is brought up with the Jones Act. And I think people that support the Jones Act, um, they will argue that it's a safety thing for America, but it, that um, also it helps uh, the American economy and sustain jobs in America. So yes, while the Jones Act does protect jobs of certain people in the United States, because they're assured that foreign labor won't make them irrelevant. So in conclusion, while I, just, I do understand the history of the Jones Act, and I understand its significance to the maritime industry, especially workers within the United States that work um, in this industry, in this field, I, I do understand what that does. I understand the implication, like the, um, sorry, the safeguarding that it does give to them. Uh, I think the Joan Act, creates a market in a sector that already has very high barriers to entry, and it makes it even worse. I am personally pretty against strong protectionist measures. Um, this is because I, this is because they lessen competition within a market. Well, I do think that sometimes they are necessary, so that's on a case-by-case -case basis, but um, this is the strongest protectionist measure that I've pretty much learned about, um, learned about by myself. But, um, the strongest protection center that I learned about um, and its uh, consequences to this consequences towards people living in the United States I think personally is worse than um, its advantages although it protects maritime workers um, in the United States the only reason it's doing so is because it's not allowing for that comp for that foreign competition and companies will find ways around this. So like I said, cruise ships have these flag of conveniences. Also some boats, sometimes it's from Hawaii, stopping in Canada and driving over into the United States. So you are shipping your Amer something from America to another country and then driving it back down to America. That, that shouldn't happen, but that's the way that people get around the Jones Act. There are other ways to get around it. So whatever that may be. I also believe in the idea that saving jobs um, in a sector is one that needs to be pretty reconsidered. And I'm sorry if that's something that offends you or something you don't agree with. Um, I have a strong belief in that. I think um, this idea of people taking their jobs or that we need to save our jobs, I think that is a scare tactic that is used to limit immigration. I also think it's a scare tactic that can also be used um, to limit uh, implementation of technological uh, technological innovation in certain sectors. So, because people are afraid they're gonna lose their jobs. However, I do think that things will balance out. And um, I think that it, it's just not right for innovation. I don't think it's right for the free market. Um, there will be other jobs. <laughs> when we open up the market, I believe more competition leads to lower prices on goods, which then leads to more demand in certain products and increases um, GDP. Joining, removing the Jones Act, I do not believe would cause a large shift in unemployment within the United States in the long run. The boats won't stop sailing. And not everyone will lose their job. And there will be other jobs. So... So that's just my opinion on it. Um, what's your opinion on the Jones Act? <laughs> I'd love to know. I hope you found this relaxing, even though I'm a little passionate about it. But uh, I couldn't really soften spoken. But uh, I hope you still enjoyed it. All right.